Hi everyone, my name is Steve Goodwin and this is my anchor test video number 120. I'm going to call this one part 3 for my veering testing and what we'll focus on is the 45 pound range anchors in the soft mud here at Scow Bay. Now I've previously done uh, two other sort of compilation veer test videos. Uh, the first one was the big anchors in the sandy mud seabed. Uh, then I did another round of veer tests with the 20 pound range anchors. So for those that aren't familiar, I'll describe uh, real quickly what the protocol is. Uh, it'll all be at around 25 foot of water and 125 feet of total road for a scope of 5 to 1. I'll be using what I've been calling long chain, so it's 80 feet of 5 16 high test chain. And uh, the protocol as far as the test goes is I set the anchors straight ahead and then I just um, vector the thrust of the boat to the side a little bit and the, the boat just walks all the way around through 180 degrees. And if the anchor uh, maintains its hold, I go ahead and straighten out uh, the thrust and then increase thrust up to the maximum of the boat or the maximum of the anchor's hold. So we get sort of two things at once. We get a veer check plus a maximum holding power. Okay, conditions are just right for testing. We're slack tide, light wind, perfect day. Let's get to it. I'll start off with the 46 pound Delta because this was the worst anchor in the seabed. In fact, in my previous test last summer with Panope, it uh, it was the same. That was just a straight line check and uh, in any case I couldn't get more than 165 pounds of holding out of this anchor. I did pile that chain up downwind or away from the anchor. I was very careful not to pile chain on the anchor and was equally careful in the initial part of the set just just at idle and slowly bringing up power. But the anchor just does not seem to dig in well here. I, I, I recorded 165 pounds of solid no motion holding and then the next application or the next increase in power uh, right away it was dragging at more than two knots. 215 pounds, 0.2 knots, holding. Point 0.4, point 0.6, point 0.9, 1.7, 1.9, knots. Next anchor did a little better, but still not great. This is a 44 pound stainless steel Epsilon anchor, and I'll mention that the roll bar that is optional is not installed for this test. So first try, it released at 500 pounds of thrust and it did not reset. We see it came up clean, so it must have had some, some mud wedged into it. But with this really smooth, polished surface, apparently the mud was able to just slough off. Second try was not as good. It released at 335 pounds of thrust. I obviously could not do any veering for this anchor, so I just cut it off at that point. Uh, made some holding power, but no veer for the Epsilon. This is the 45 pound Mantis M2 and it also had limited straight line holding ability here in this soft mud. Uh, it was solid at 440 pounds but at 500 or more it began dragging. Went ahead and executed a veer at a reduced thrust of 395 pounds and it did very well. This is the final uh, portion of that 180 degree veer and as you can see there's that camera tether track tracing through the mud uh, looking real good. Not a lot of motion. We're now in the build up to the straight line maximum again after the veer and generally anchors do better after the veer here in this soft mud. Uh, I did record 690 pounds but it was moving at two knots at that point. Uh, it was always moving above 440 pounds of thrust. Next is the 27 pound aluminum Sarka XL number 5 and how it performed was in a straight line the anchor would hold uh, continuously. More than once it held 465 pounds and released at 535 pounds. It would reset after these drags. Uh, so I then downgraded thrust to 395 and tried a veer and it released within 10 degrees. Next anchor is the 45 pound Spade S100 and it also could not hold the target veer thrust of 535 pounds. I went ahead and re reduced the, th the thrust to three, 395 pounds and it executed that quite well. I think there was some motion, uh, some head motion during that veer, but that was good. Uh, then I ramped up power at the end in a straight line and got up to 945 pounds before it was dragging at two knots, but I'll mention that it was always moving, continuously 
moving above 465 pounds. So pretty marginal, uh, even in the straight line holding for the Spade S100. Next is the 50 pound quick set, and I, I was not able to get 535 pounds of holding initially, so I reduced the thrust for the veer and, and gave it a 395 pound veer check, and it, it completed it. It made it through 180 degrees at that reduced thrust. Got some reasonable pictures here of the bottom, so we can plainly see the chain is moving mostly sideways, just a little bit of forward motion. If it could have done this at 535 pounds, I would have given this a very high score for the veer, but nope, that was a reduced reduced pull, so it gets a it'll get a lower number. I'll mention that in the five tries initially to set this anchor, uh, it would not reset after releasing, so it's going to get a fairly low rating for resetting here in the soft mud. That's a new column that I'll I'll go over here at the end of the video. After that veer, though, the anchor did do a little better. I did get 535 pounds of holding before a, a fast drag at 620 pounds. This is the 27 pound aluminum Spade A100 and it was noteworthy in that it took a long distance for it to quit moving on its initial straight line ramp up to 535 pounds but it did hold it and I was able to execute a 180 degree veer. Uh, then in a straight line, the anchor at 685 pounds was moving one knot. At uh, 790 pounds, it did increase up to two plus knots. 32. I'll mention that although the maximum holding power of this anchor is not terribly high, uh, the anchor never released. Even up when it was dragging at two plus knots, it stayed fully engaged. This is a 50 pound genuine CQR anchor. Took two tries to get the anchor to fully engage and hold the 535 pounds needed for the veering test. But it did, it did eventually achieve that straight line hold and then throughout the veer it was fairly solid. I noted that the GPS track uh, arcing on around through 180 degrees was a nice semicircle without any bumps in it. In the final straight line portion, the anchor was solid up at 685 pounds and then uh, had a full release at 790 pounds and I'll note that the anchor did not want to reset once it released. Forty-five pound genuine Bruce soft mud scow bay veer, five hundred thirty-five baseline. So the Bruce performed quite well here in the soft mud. Uh, I will mention it did take a while for it to settle down and stop moving at the five hundred and thirty-five pounds of initial baseline thrust. However, once it did, I was able to begin a veer uh, to to starboard there and made it all the way through one hundred and eighty degrees, uh, no problem. The GPS track was a nice semicircle. Here in the straight line portion, the anchor was solid at 790 pounds of thrust. Took a little bit of motion before it settled down. Uh, then at 860 pounds of thrust, the anchor was dragging at two knots. And I'll mention that the anchor always was engaged and did not release. Two knots. That's my protocol. When it hits two knots, we shut her down. But it was real steady. At no point at any time did this anchor tend to release fully. It always seemed to stay engaged and make make some resistance. Good. This is the 50 pound steel Sarka XL number no. 5. It performed very well. It uh, set immediately, held the 535 pounds of thrust, uh, and then held a 180 degrees of veer quite solid. In the straight line portion, the anchor held solid 685 pounds, and at 790 pounds, it did have a full release. I'll mention that the anchor was not able to reset after that release, and I thought that was a little odd given that it came up from the seabed clean as a whistle. The 46 pound Ultra was very good here in the soft mud. Uh, it had an, an initial set that was just immediate. 
uh, held the, the, the target 535 pounds of thrust just fine, so a veer was commenced and it made it all the way around through 180 degrees, no problem. In the straight line portion, it was uh, zero boat speed at 685 pounds of thrust. Uh, then there was a fairly long drag at 790 pounds of thrust at, uh, oh, it, it varied, it cycled between a half a knot and 1.5 knots. Then at 860 pounds, there was a solid 1.5 knot drag, and then finally it reached two knots, or two plus knots, at 945 pounds of thrust. I'll mention the anchor did not release at any point. Overall, just a very, very solid performance from the 46-pound Ultra. It would appear the anchor has stabilized. Let's go to 860 pounds. Now the 47 pound Super Sarka, it did something that I had never witnessed an anchor do before. What was happening is it was having trouble setting. It would drag at 285 pounds, then reset, then it would drag again at 400. But at some point it was dragging continuously at low power. And I thought, just out of curiosity, what would happen if I gave it a burst? So I did that. I give it a quick little jab of the throttle, let the boat ramp up to three or four knots real quickly. That was it right there. Not, not a real big burst. And right when I did that, the anchor reset. And I have a theory as to what exactly was happening. And at the end of the video, we'll talk about that on the workbench. But in the meantime, the anchor did a, a great 180 degree veer, no motion detected on the GPS track. And then here in the straight line portion, the anchor was really quite good. It uh, was absolutely solid at 860 pounds, and then it got a full release at 945 pounds. Okay, 3,800 RPM, or 945 pounds full release. Okay, we got the 45-pound Rockna roll bar, scow bay, veering test, 25 water, 125 road, 80 feet of its chain, looking for a 500-pound baseline, and then 180 degrees of veer. 2200. No movement. 2400. 3.3 knots, point two, zero. Zero. 2600, point three, zero. So when I increase thrust, it moves ahead a little bit and then stops, so it's good, it's setting deeper. Here's 2800, 535 pounds, zero, holding good. Veering to starboard. So the Rockna did great in that try, but I'm going to show you some clips from a second try I did with the 44-pound uh, Rockna. Uh, it was the exact same thing in the initial part. It was an immediate set, uh, and held the 535 uh, immediately, and did a perfect veer. The only difference is it actually held greater uh, straight line pull this time. It was it was solid at 860, so uh, the, the, the other try it was solid at 790. And then uh, on the continuing to ramp up power, it was uh, finally releasing at 1,120 pounds of thrust. So very, very impressive from this 
44 pound roll bar Rockna anchor here in the soft mud. And it let go. It was dragging about a knot and a half, then it lurched ahead. Again, that was 4,200. Okay, next up is the 45 pound Mantis M1. Now you'll notice I've got this sort of roll bar helper here. That's to keep the roll bar from bending back under high load. Now I have never bent this 45 pound Mantis roll bar. I have bent a 17 pound Mantis M1 roll bar and you know the scantlings are very similar as it sized up so I do believe that this roll bar is vulnerable to bending under high load. I will mention that the 17 pound M1 Mantis that I had bent previously uh, it was during this exact same seabed and test so this anchor uh, is going to end up resisting uh, about double, maybe a little more than twice the amount of force that that smaller Mantis uh, bent under. So I don't think I'm too off base in, in thinking that, that that roll bar may have had trouble here. But uh, weak roll bar or not, the anchor performed really, really well. Uh, it was an immediate set, a perfect veer, and then on the ramp up, it was solid at 860 pounds, and then with each increase in power, the anchor would just move slightly faster and faster, up until well over 1,200 pounds of thrust, uh, the, the anchor finally was, was dragging it at more than two knots. Very, very steady. No breakouts, no lift ups, no reductions. It just moves faster the more power you give it. Pretty, very, very impressive. Next, we'll look at the 40 pound Knox anchor. And keep in mind that in all these shootouts or comparisons I make, um, it's a head to head test. Uh, there's no allowances made for different weights or sizes. So, you know, this anchor at 40 pounds is being uh, compared to anchors that are more than 20% larger. Uh, in spite of that uh, disadvantage of size, the anchor does extremely well here. It sets immediately. It uh, holds the, uh, the target of 500 pounds of baseline thrust. It executes the veer just wonderfully. We, we are watching the playback here at eight times speed so we can get a, a better picture of what kind of motion this anchor has or lack of it. And then in the straight line portion, it was solid at 840 pounds of thrust and an increased speed uh, reached two knots at 1120 pounds thrust. Came up surprisingly clean, but lots of mud in the chain. Next is the positively colossal 51 pound Viking 20. Now this anchor is just a real king here in the soft mud. It uh, sets immediately uh, it executed this veer uh, with the least motion that I've detected. We can just barely see a little bit of arc shape uh, as this boat uh, veers to starboard and very, very little motion. The anchor did plunge out of view right away, so we don't get to see much of the uh, final portions of the test. But I can report that in the straight line portion, the anchor was solid at over 1,000 pounds. And at the max thrust of this test boat, uh, which was 1,150 pounds, um, motion was was quite slow. It was less than one knot. Okay, it held the full 1150. It was moving at less than a knot. Call it, call it at initially. Call it seven tenths. Then it settled down and was moving about 0.5 knots at the end of one minute of that max holding, max power. Okay, 15 pound Fortress FX23 Scow Bay Soft Mud Veering Test, 535 baseline, 25 foot water, 125 road, 80 feet long chain. There's 135 pounds holding. 
165 pounds and we're moving fast. 101.5, uh, 1.6. Okay, we're back down to zero. And there's 100 pounds of thrust and we are at zero, holding. 135 pounds, 0.4 knots, 0.5. Point six, point seven. Point seven. No good. Point six. I'm going to give it a burst. And that seemed to work. I felt a good solid jerk. By golly, it did. And there is 535 pounds holding. Well, once again, we just witnessed something that is a new discovery to me anyway, and that is that an anchor that was dragging along on the initial set was actually helped by bursting the power and having the boat uh, lurch ahead at three or four knots. I wouldn't, wouldn't have believed it unless I did it myself, actually. In any event, once this anchor set, it executed a veer perfectly and held a lot of holding power. As I stated, this is a 15-pound FX-23 Fortress. It's an aluminum pivoting fluke anchor, and it does develop a tremendous amount of holding power here. Uh, it did resist the full boat thrust of 1325 pounds. However, there was still some motion, and it was inhibited by the fact that it picked up a significant piece of wood uh, somewhere along the line during all that dragging. Here's the FX-23 on retrieval. It did pick up a lot of wood. Okay, it's another try for the FX-23, but this time it's just going to be a straight ahead pull. Idling ahead at 75 pounds thrust, we're doing about a knot and a half. Then 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0, holding. 135 pounds, 0 0.4 knots, 0 0.5 knots, 0.6 knots, 0 0.7 knots, 0 0.8 knots, 0 0.9. 1.2, 1.1, same as last time, doesn't like to set with this long chain. Fortress anchors with short chain have done much better at the initial setting. Okay, we're back down to zero boat speed and 100 pounds thrust. There's 135 and we're holding. Nope, 135 pounds and 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Okay, the last time, uh, I actually got it to set by running the boat ahead kind of fast, a good burst of power. So let's try it again. Let's get it down to a stop. I'm assuming that this 100 pounds of, of thrust that it's able to hold might just be the chain laying on the bottom. Maybe part of the fluke is dug in, but let's give it a burst and see what it does. Okay, that was three knots. Sure enough, it stopped us. Would have never guessed a burst of, of speed would make an anchor set better, but it's done it. This is the third time with two different anchors that that's worked. Yeah, it's, it's solid here. Uh, 165 pounds, no movement. Two hundred fifteen pounds, no movement. Five hundred thirty five pounds, holding.
1325. It eventually settled down and stopped. Brilliant. Okay, here's the FX23 after the straight line holding check. Uh, it eventually settled down and held the 1325 with no motion detectable from the GPS or by looking over the side. Okay, last week I mentioned that there was a shakeup coming on the performance chart, and indeed there is. Uh, before we start looking at anchors, though, I just want to mention that instead of one soft mud column that had numbers populated, we now have three. Uh, in addition to the soft mud holding, we now have soft mud veer numbers and a new column, soft mud set and reset. Keep in mind the reset is not about 180 degree reset, it's just about straight inline resetting after a release. Uh, note that the soft mud holding numbers have changed substantially. I've, I've re-rated all the anchors based on the smaller, higher thrust test boats. Uh, no more of those holding numbers were based on the old Panope tests. Uh, that was incomplete on this chart since we've added so many new anchors. But in any event, uh, since we've got three soft mud columns, uh, well, anchors that do well there are going to go up in value. Uh, in, the, in the total average, and then of course anchors that don't do well there are going to go down, and that's exactly what has happened. Um, I'll also mention that the, the Vulcan 55, it's missing from the chart. That anchor's been sold. The Manson Supreme, it was modified many, many years ago, and I'm just no longer going to test that anchor, given that it is a modified copy. I'll look for replacements for those two when I can, when I can find one. Uh, also, the flawed Rockna, I took it. I'm no longer going to rate its total average. It's still on the chart there, just to indicate that it indeed was the worst resetting and worst deep setting anchor I've ever tested. Anyway, on to these anchors for today. At the top of the chart, we see that the Excel number five has retained its position. However, its lead is becoming somewhat thin. Uh, the big news for this chart, though, is in a few anchors that moved quite a bit. Uh, first, the Mantis M1. It's currently in second place. It moved up from eighth place. The Super Sarka moved from sixth to third. Uh, Viking stayed the same at fourth place. Uh, Ultra moved up from ninth to fifth. Uh, Mantis M2 was another big story. It moved down from second to sixth. We see there the Mantis M2. Well, in those soft mud columns, I see a couple twos and a four. That's a Clear example of an anchor that did really well in the sandy mud, but not so good here in the soft mud. And, of course, down it goes in the overall ranking. Uh, another big story was the Knox anchor. It was fantastic in the soft mud. It moved up from 14th to 8th place. Quick Sec 50 moved uh, down from 7th to 10th. CQR moved up from 15th to 11th. Rockna, that was a pretty big jump for it. It moved from 17th to 12th place. That's an anchor that really rates highly amongst a lot of people. Uh, the anchor has always set and reset perfectly in all sea beds when it's clean, but it does have that fouling issue in the sandy mud, and that, of course, is what kept it really, really low on my list previously. But, well, now it is at least up off from the bottom and toward the middle of the chart. Uh, another story was the Bruce. It did really, really well here in the soft mud. It's up uh, from 18th place to 13th place. Uh, yeah, I see it got a 5, a 4, and a 5, and that's just really top notch here. I, I didn't think a Bruce could really make uh, the same kind of holding power as uh, the more modern competing anchors, but at least in this soft mud, it is a real contender. You might be thinking, hey, how can you just go from one column in a particular seabed to three? And frankly, I made a mistake earlier. When I first discovered this soft mud, I thought that that was a unique, sort of an oddball soft or oddball seabed that just won't occur very often, and therefore it doesn't deserve any more than one column. However, I now believe that soft mud is more prevalent, even in my area, uh, but certainly there's other parts of the world where soft mud may be the dominant substrate type. So it gets three columns. Uh, note that the sandy mud has always had three columns, and uh, clean sand has two columns, cobblestone has one column. Uh, naturally, I'd like to have, you know, gosh, 20 more columns on here with all kinds of different seabeds. But uh, I'll try to keep, keep the seabed types as even as I can. Uh, uh, the exception will be that cobblestone. I don't see much reason to add columns for it being a truly oddball anchoring site. Okay, here are the two anchors that were having trouble setting initially and somehow were able to set immediately following a sudden burst of power and a lurching of the boat going forward. This is a Super Sarka number six, weighs 47 pounds, and my theory, and it is just a theory, 
was that this small diameter solid roll bar, which works really well in a harder substrate, perhaps was penetrating down into the substrate and preventing the anchor from rolling into the correct position. I do believe that this plate that is put here by the manufacturer is there for the express purpose of preventing the anchor from settling directly upside down into extremely soft substrates. So perhaps it was doing its job uh, and lifting the anchor up, but maybe not completely all the way over. And I'm guessing maybe the anchor was in this position with a partially buried roll bar, and that, that lurch or jerk of the boat just simply jostled the anchor. Maybe it tipped it over enough to where the point came into contact and dove into the seabed. Now for the FX23, uh, my theory is a little bit more of just a wild guess, and that is that perhaps the stock was pushed down into the seabed and thus not having a good angle of attack for these fluke toes. Um, I have had the camera on Danforth and Fortress Anchors several times when they were dragging and they were up in this sort of sideways position, real stable, so that's not unheard of. Um, and then there again, uh, if it was in this position and not setting, maybe a lurch of of boat momentum forward, maybe that was enough to jostle, or maybe maybe this this fluke then sort of rose up against the pressure of the mud going by and maybe able to get a bite. But uh, I intend to investigate this further. I'd like to go back there with the fortress at least and put a camera on it, and no intent of holding power checks or veering checks. Just I want to see if this setting under high speed is really a thing or not. Okay, you may have noticed that the wall here has been depopulated of the 20 pound range anchors. They're on the floor here. I'm right in the middle of a bunch of new winch testing in the sandy mud for all that group of anchors. And that's what we'll be coming up next week. Really appreciate everybody watching and contributing. If you haven't yet, uh, please consider a donation to either the PayPal or Patreon links that are down in the description below. All right, hope everyone has a good time out on the water and anchors safely. So see you next time. So long.